I reckon that at least 80% of people are not using Microsoft 365 to its full potential. Let's change that. In this video, you'll discover the common mistakes people make with Microsoft 365 and how to use Microsoft 365 more effectively. So many people struggle with features that are designed to improve productivity, actually because they've not already understood it or using it in a slightly the wrong way, it's actually aiding to their frustration and causing inefficiencies in most organizations. So we're going to go over five common mistakes that people make with OneDrive, Teams and SharePoint, why they cause some issues and how to fix them once and for all. So stick around for all five of those. So just before we get on to number one, if you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime. We help organizations be more efficient, make their employees' lives easier, happening to use Microsoft 365 to do it. If you're interested in learning more, we've got free training in the link in the description below. Or if you know you already want to work together and want to understand what we can do together, then go straight to book a call using the link in the description below. But on to number one. The biggest mistake I see when I go into organizations or even be people that come on a free discovery call, sometimes they're sharing things out of their OneDrive internally which there's not much need to do usually if you've got everything else set up, which I'll come on to at the end of the video. And that just leads to either people can't find the file that's been shared with them, the files live in the OneDrive of the person that's shared it, and so if they leave, you might lose the file. Sometimes people have got whole industries of things set up and shared from individuals' OneDrives. They've shared an entire folder, and they're using that like a shared folder, which is fine as whilst they're there, but really it will be better in a different place. And Microsoft's a bit different than say Google Drive in that that's a bit more clear that it's you know one big space. You might have some private spaces and you can choose to share them. Microsoft chooses to call their products two separate things, OneDrive and SharePoint, even though probably behind the scenes, they are all one thing. OneDrive is personal to you until you choose to share something out. SharePoint is to a group of people. Everyone can see everything there by default unless you choose to restrict it or open it out to more people. So they're very similar, but OneDrive is, I guess, designed for you to work on stuff for yourself until it's ready to share. Potentially, I would say just, just go ahead and stick it in the, the end shared location straight away and then go and put it somewhere where people want to share. So into a team or to a SharePoint site, which will come onto the simplest way to sort that out at the end of the video. So that's the main mistake I see people doing with OneDrive Teams and SharePoint is just overusing OneDrive. And if you can get people out of the cultural habit of like working on stuff until it's private, until it's ready to go and get more into, look, everyone's just working on work in progress stuff. Let's just work more out in the open as if you were working in an open plan office. Someone could look over you and see your screen in an open plan office and see what you're working on. I guess in the old days when you're writing stuff out, you could look and see what people are writing. It doesn't matter if it's not ready yet. You don't need to keep it completely private in most instances of work before you go and share it. And then you'll end up not having duplication or version control issues or losing stuff or people will be able to go back to the file because if you share something with someone in OneDrive, in theory, it should appear in their shared with me bit of OneDrive, but maybe people don't even know that's there. And two, even if they do, sometimes the file just doesn't even show up there. So that's mistake number one. And we'll go through all five before we come on how to fix it, because actually we can fix quite a lot of these issues with one main change. So number two is quite similar, is having like multiple SharePoint sites set up as well as people working in teams as well as people working in chat sometimes as well but in terms of document storage people are using teams just to like collaborate on files but then they've got like the official place to go and put that file that's in a separate sharepoint site and the problem with that is that teams already is a sharepoint site when you set a team up it sets up a sharepoint site to store the documents in the team and so if you're working in the team, depending on how you share that file, you've got a version that's living in the Teams channel files and a version that's living in the SharePoint site, the, the official place. And you can end up with version control issues, like maybe someone's shared that 
as a link and that's actually updating the one in the official place maybe they've just moved that file into the team and they're actually working in a separate place and so having an official place an official place to go and put files that isn't teams is just going to cause you more issues and there's probably no need because if you've got access to that place to go and put the file anyway and you've got access into the team you could just do it all in teams and so coming on to point three which is very similar is then overusing teams chat rather than teams channels which i see a lot but also then sharing files in a teams chat again depending on how you share it could put a copy of the same file into the person's onedrive that shared that file so if you don't send the link properly and even if you do send the link properly in a teams chat you might be opening up permissions and other people depending on where it's stored don't realize that actually other people now have got permissions to see that file that's live and co-authorable and updated and also in sync with someone else because there's no great way of seeing what's been shared around the place so just overusing and sharing files in teams chat is not great unless it's like one-to-one -one. so if you're doing like one-to-one -one stuff uh, there's no point really setting up something else just to manage that the file's probably already in your onedrive anyway and then you're just sharing it with maybe your manager for a one-to-one -one form in teams chat like that's fine but i see people with like the entire organization or like groups of people 10 20 people in a group chat and all using group chat and sharing files in there actually that would be better done in a different place within teams that's built for that straight out of the box which we'll talk about in a sec just before then we'll go on to number four which is using sharepoint with some of the features that are built into sharepoint but sharepoint is a bit of a beast and for normal people doing a normal job that is not a specific process i see lots of people setting up sharepoint sites and different document libraries with loads of metadata and this used to happen in my corporate job which is an absolute pain everyone hated it where you create a project and then the project's got like loads and loads of metadata which if you don't know what metadata is columns of information that you need to fill in for every file rather than just storing stuff in folder tree and yeah you can do that in sharepoint and sometimes it's quite useful if you use it as like the icing on the cake but thinking people first people are used to files and folders and so even if you've got that metadata in real life pragmatism people end up creating folders within inside that metadata stuff anyway even though you don't need a folder because you've got the metadata to like sort stuff out and if you just want to like copy a file and do something quick then you get to save it and it says oh you can't save it because you need to fill in all these things and either they're optional and no one bothers filling them in or you make them mandatory and everyone hates it and just puts you know the first option just to just to get their file saved because like they've got to go to a meeting or they've got to get home and so like the metadata is not even correct so yet there are some instances where you've got specific processes and metadata is usually really handy to do cool stuff like fill in things in the document with the information that you put in there but for most stuff where people are just working on normal files you just want to go file and folder and you want it to be really simple which again we can go through in a sec just before we get on to the solution number five most common mistake is not allowing everybody to create sharepoint news posts so if you think more of sharepoint now like the intranet because you can make an intranet on sharepoint as well as sharepoint being for document storage people either think of it like one or the other but it's everything just having like a top level intranet where there's a few people that can go and put stuff on so maybe there's hr policies which you do want a few people to put on and not everyone will be able to change it you want maybe standard operating procedures there sops but also there's then like company news and stuff like that the amount of times i've gone into an organization and just no one ends up going to the intranet because there's nothing new on there so yeah they might go to there to go and find the hr policy but then if there's nothing new there in terms of news they probably don't trust the policy there anyway because it, everything looks really old so it's like well is this even in date does people even use this 
and the internet is usually a place where things slowly but inevitably go to die so you might spend loads of money paying a consultant to build an internet for you which you don't need to do because you can do it yourself uh, but say you pay them then they build in loads of fancy stuff it looks really whizzy and then over time no one updates it there's no news on there and everything just goes to die and so you can empower everybody with this simple structure that I'm about to tell you to just go and publish news and think more about how they're landing information around the company, how they would consume information in their personal lives, they probably wouldn't expect like a BBC News or a Fox News or a CNN News, whichever news you watch, Sky News, they wouldn't expect them to send them a PowerPoint attachment on an email that's got nothing in the email and the need to open the attachment. Like that isn't how people consume information in their personal lives. You would expect to either you go to a site if you want to find out information. So you go to the internet because you know that there's going to be something new on there and discover it yourself as it's going on live. Or they sign up for like an email push notification. Say, well, I want to know about this type of news. Whenever there's something new, maybe once a week, email me and we can replicate that within the organization, but most organizations don't bother getting set up like that. No one goes and looks on the internet because there's nothing on there and everyone's got loads of news, but no one knows what everyone else is doing. So those are all the five common mistakes that we want to fix with Microsoft 365. How do we go and do it? What's the solution? So I always talk about the digital equivalent of an open plan office. So in terms of files, if you were working in an open plan office, one, you wouldn't work in, the, in private because most of your work isn't going to be private. There will be some things that are private that you want maybe want to get into a meeting room yourself just to squirrel away on something private. You might have one-to-ones that are private. But most of the time, you're just working at your normal desk. People could come over and see what you're doing. People can overhear conversations. And that's what we want to replicate in Microsoft 365. And there's really only one place that can be done, which is Teams channels. So if we think with Teams first, we don't need loads of other SharePoint sites because every time we set up a team, it sets up a SharePoint site for us. In terms of uh, collaboration and overhearing things, Teams channels is a way where we can work out in the open, in the open plan office and overhear things that are going on metaphorically in the team, which is great for hybrid working because whether you're in the office or not, you can still see what's going on. You can opt not to get interrupted by stuff if you don't want, and you could go and see everything that's going on if you chose to. Or you can be like, hey, can you just come over here a sec, like you would do in an open plan office, you can pull people into a conversation that they might not be overhearing. All that we can do in Teams channels, which we can't do anywhere else, because if we do it in Teams chat, either you're getting absolutely bombarded by every single notification in a group chat, because there's no way of opting out, apart from if you just opt out of everything, mute the entire group chat, and then you're not getting notified by anything. So then that causes people to say, well, people are missing stuff in Teams, therefore Teams is bad. So anything official that we really need people to understand, to get notified by, we'll send them an email. So now you've got Teams chats, maybe Teams channels and email. You might even have WhatsApp groups in the organization. You've just got too many things coming at you. We want one place to work. You wouldn't have two different offices and like next to each other and decide whether people are going to go into one or the other. Like, well, I don't know where they're working. I don't, I can't speak to that person. So I need to book a meeting or go out of that office into the next one. And same with files. You wouldn't, in an open plan office, the files you're working on right now would be next to you on your desk. That's the one that you want to get access to. You might leave it on your desk for the next day it's like right to hand because you're working on it right now. We want a file and folder structure that replicates that. We don't want things buried five deep. We don't want people walking down into the basement to go into the archive to get the file they need to work on today, right now, and then go all the way down and put it back. That's what most people set up their file and folder structures like. And you're like 10, 15 clicks deep into it and then no one can discover the file. So put them where they're, most likely to be used closest to the person that's adding the value to that document, which we can do in Teams and Channels and Folder Structure. Similarly, once you finish with that 
file, you might put it in your desk drawer or somewhere with a filing cabinet just behind a bank of desks if it's for a department. You wouldn't then go and store it all the way down the archive. Again, we want to replicate that in Teams, Channels, Files and Folder structure. And then we do need an archive and some place to go and put old stuff. That's all cool, but usually people work as like, uh, they've got five different folders just to segregate stuff, just for the sake of it. And it's 2025, we don't need to do that anymore. Search is way better. We want to leave stuff closest and really flat folder structure without using metadata, just so people can get stuff done. And then we'll sort out where it's going to live after, but with only one version. So we want to cut out email, cut out Teams chats and just move everything into channels. We want all the files to live in channels and not have any other SharePoint sites where we're going to store official versions of the file. We don't want official communications different. Everything goes into Teams channels. If it's about that subject, it goes there really clear and reduces a lot of mental clutter and digital clutter. And then you've usually saved enough time that people are then bothered about how communication is going across the organization, how people are consuming information. And then with the same assets that we've got with a simplified team structure, one that's usually got less teams with more people in per team, usually one main team for a small medium sized business, even up to small enterprise, then we can empower everybody to create SharePoint pages and SharePoint news and use the news web part, which is a special kind of web part to filter stuff through and show people news that they might not have seen or things that they've bookmarked or things that the Microsoft algorithm thinks they should see or news by department and just sharing wins across the organization in a more vibrant way with pictures and text and video. And that really brings everything together as like, well, why are we having a, a, a synchronous meeting when someone can just record some training or you know, whatever they want to present and send it around on a SharePoint news post and people can go watch that video back whenever they want. So that's just some of the ways that we could get more out of Microsoft 365 and be more productive and make it a nicer place to work and make your employees lives easier. If you want to go a bit deeper, we've got some free training which goes through more depth, a bit longer to how to get more out of Microsoft 365. And if you want to know even more or you've just got an inkling that you could work better in your organization and you want some help doing that, then book a call using the link in the description below. We've got a couple of ways that we could help to fit any budget and any size of organization. If you got any value out of this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and the bell icon before you go, it really helps us in the algorithm. And thanks for watching so far. I'll see you in the next one.